All right. Well, um, Colton is going to be bringing the message to the table. But babe, wait, wait. But wait. But wait, there's more. Come on, we're going to tell them the. the, the I figured we'd tell them now. Good job. Huh? I'll be up tomorrow. Okay. All right. Good job. Good job. All right. Huh? No, we're not having a baby. That's what told me. Freak. Rumor. All right. Rumor. So, here's the deal. Uh, as many of you know, if you're watching online, if you're here, uh, we were supposed to go to camp on Monday. Uh, and, and we decided against that with everything that was going on, but we didn't want there to not be a camp experience For there to be a moment for you to encounter Jesus to have fun with your friends So what we're going to do is we're having a camp reset We're having a fantastic different event. That's gonna be fantastic amazing and incredible next Wednesday and Thursday We are going to be having day events and evening services So it's gonna be next Wednesday and next Thursday. We're gonna have day events evening services now we'll give you all the details of what those are going to be uh when they're going to happen all that kind of stuff uh next week but i'm uh, sorry sorry tomorrow we'll give you all the details tomorrow but um we're going to have some different things we're going to have games we're going to have uh i was going to say a field trip it's not a field trip we're going to go somewhere <laughs> we're going to have some fun in some different places during the daytime we're going to have a hangout time and then we're going to have evening sessions where we're going to have games we're going to have worship we're going to have messages all that good stuff and so um this instead of camp where it was 300 this is going to be just 40 dollars. and so we want all of you to be a part of it we'll have registrations up for it tomorrow but we're super excited about being able to uh, hang out with you guys have you encounter jesus and even though we're not doing that camp we're having something that is going to be fantastic it's going to be a ton of fun and you're not going to forget it so um super excited about that so Saturday next wednesday and thursday all day and evening, all day and evening, both days. Be ready. We're going to let you know what's happening. Now, without further ado, is it ado or ordo? I don't know, man. Without talking anymore, let's welcome up Pastor Colton. <laughs> How you guys doing? I know, we brought this from home. It's like a message prop, but not really a message prop. Just to make it look like there's more people in the house. Exactly. Um, but if you make faces at your neighbor through the mirror, I'll still see your face. Make the face at the face. So, um, how you guys doing? Good. You guys good? Um, if you want to, in your Bible, go to James chapter 1. That's where we're going to be reading from a bit today. Um, I'm super excited about this. Um, some are going good for you guys. Who's ready for normal? I'm ready to go back to normal. Um, well, my name is Pastor Colton. I'm the kids pastor. How many of you um, here were in kids church at one point and have graduated out of kids church? Um, when Josh asked me to speak at the middle school night, I was <laughs> that's awkward. super awkward. Um, so I was super excited when Josh was like, hey, would you mind preaching at the middle school? And I was like, what? That would be so awesome. Tons of fun. Um, so I know I've known a lot of you guys for a lot of time. So um, we're going to be in James chapter 1, but I always like to start off with a kind of kind of like a fun question. How many of you this morning um, looked in the mirror or you used a mirror this morning to get ready or anything like that? How many of you changed your outfit 10 times before you went out the door? Um, you don't actually have to answer that question if you don't want to. But um, have you ever stopped to think about like how useful certain things are? Yeah. Like, could you imagine what the world would be like if we didn't have mirrors? Or or scary, the world would be like if we didn't have mirrors? How many of you have almost been out the door, you checked in the mirror and you're like, thank the Lord yeah. that I checked the mirror before I went outside, otherwise who would have known what happened to me today? Um, how many of you have ever not wanted to look in a mirror? Maybe, for example, <laughs> you, you got a sunburn. You ever get a, a, a such a bad sunburn? You're like, I just, I just, I just don't even, I just don't even want to look. Because if I look, it just gets worse. You're like, I went to the lake. I thought I was gonna get gorgeously tan. I got gorgeously burnt. It's just not the same. And you just don't want to look. 
Maybe, um, maybe it's because you got a bad haircut. You ever get a bad haircut before? It's kind of, it's kind of frustrating to get a bad haircut because you like, you paid for it and you're like, but then there's literally nothing you can really do once it's there. It's not like, it's not you can be like, okay, like I'm just gonna hide this. I remember one time when I was a kid, I thought I would give myself a haircut and it was back when bowl cuts were a thing. Did anybody ever have a bowl cut? It was literally looked like somebody put a bowl on your head and they, they shaved it. And I took scissors and I cut right in the middle. It was so bad. And then I proceeded to tell my parents, I didn't cut my hair. Like, I don't know who else would have cut my hair. But um, like you just didn't want to look in the mirror. There was one particular time we had just put these shelves up in my room, like these floating Ikea shelves up on the wall. And um, what, I, what I hadn't anticipated at the time is we hung them right over where I had to plug my light in that lit my room. I didn't have a light switch in my room. And so I, I would have to plug it in every time I went in my room to go to bed, I'd plug my light in. Well, I didn't anticipate the fact that I had just hung these floating shelves right above where I plugged my light in. So I went in one night, just as my normal routine, bent down to go plug my light in, but instead of just doing it like normal, there was now an Ikea floating shelf that met my head. As I bent down full force, wham! Like, right on the, it was literally, it wasn't on the flat edge, it was right on the corner. The, the exact corner of the shelf, full commitment, head smash. I was like, you ever just like do something and you're like, oh no, like, like please, Please no, and you just pray, like God, would you please just undo? Yeah. Where's the undo yeah. button? Can you please undo? And I just remember holding it saying, just don't look, just don't look, just don't look, like like that'll get better. And and I, I, I sat there, I was like in my room, in the dark, holding my head, just trying to be oblivious to what actually just happened. I was like, oh my goodness, this hurts so bad. Eventually, I did go look at it and it was horrible. I had like this huge gash, like right in the middle of my head. And it's not like I had like, bangs I could hide it it was like literally right there and I, I was sitting there on my bed thinking to myself I was like what is sitting here not looking at the mirror actually gonna benefit me nothing it's not gonna do me anything sitting here just holding it wishing it hadn't happened but it was in the moment that I looked in the mirror that I understood what I had to do to fix it right you got to wash it off kind of got to clean it up you, you know where it's at instead of walking around with this big huge gash that's all gnarly and nasty, right? It was when I chose to look in the mirror that I was actually able to do something about it. I like what James chapter 1, we're going to read from 23 through 25. I'm going to read out the Passion Translation because I like what it says, but feel free to read along in whatever you're reading along with. Um, starting in verse 23, it says, If you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like the person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and you forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty or the word of God are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. What if I told you that instead of just a mirror where we can see our looks, there was a mirror that you could see your life in. A mirror where you could actually improve your life, help your life, discover things you have to do, discover who you are, discover who's in life with you to help you. Would you want that? Right? If there was a way that you could look at your life and say, how can I, how can I help better my life? Well, the, the truth is there is, and it's the Word of God. I like what James says. It says the Word of God is kind of like a mirror. So, if you're taking notes today, the message title is Check Yourself. If you didn't bring a notepad, I recommend you pull out Chickity Chickity Check Yourself before you wreck yourself. Um, so turn your neighbor and say, Check Yourself. Check Yourself. We are going to pray and we're going to jump right in. Dear God, I thank you for tonight. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us through your word. God, I thank you that your word can act as a mirror in our life. And Lord, as we discover Lord, the benefits of your word. God, I pray that you would give us a hunger to read your word, God. That you would help us to grow through your word. Lord, I pray that you would open ears. Lord, free minds of distraction right now. Lord, here and online and on Instagram, Lord, I pray that you would help us to glean what it is that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Number one, if you're taking notes, three ways. I have three ways for you that the Bible is meant to be a mirror. Number one, 
is God's word acts as a mirror for us to do something. How many of you, you look in a mirror to actually do something? It's okay if you don't. If you look in the mirror, you're like, wow, I look good today. I look good today. Um, but for the most part, you look in the mirror to try and do something. I love what James says. He says, if you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, James is making a very specific point that there's a difference between listening and doing. How many of you know there is a difference between listening and doing? Maybe you have experienced this in your own life, sitting on the couch, watching TV, and your parents, they ask you to do something, and you hear it, and you say, okay, and an hour later, they turn your show off, and they're like, you never took the trash out, right? Because there's a difference between listening and doing. Or maybe you've been at school, and your teacher gave you a homework assignment, and you came back a week later, and they're like, where's your homework assignment? And you're like, what homework assignment? Maybe you heard it, but you didn't do it, right? Or maybe it's like math. You're like, you're like I, I hear how to do math, but I just, I just don't get how to do math, right? There's a difference between listening and doing, and James is making a clear distinction between the two, that it's important for us to not only be people who read the Word of God, who listen to the Word of God, but also for us to do the Word of God. You know, the Bible has always been intended for us to use and have it play an active role in our life. Yeah. God always intended the Word of God to play an active role in our life. It's not something that you just carry around to school and you're like, hey look, I brought my Bible today. Or sit on your bookshelf and you're like, yep, I have a Bible in my room. Or bring to 418, you're like, look, I brought my Bible to 418. It's always been intended to play an active role in our life. I like what Hebrews 412 says. It says, for the Word of God is alive and powerful. Turn your neighbor and say, it's alive and powerful. It says it's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Hebrew says that the word of God is alive and powerful. How many of you know what the word passive means? Passive means that it's, it's in the background. It doesn't really play an active role. God's word is not passive. It's active. God's word is meant to be something that we read and we look at and we see in the mirror, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. How many of you have looked in the mirror and you have seen something horribly wrong with your outfit and you just went outside anyway? <laughs> Thank you for raising your hand, right? I always go change. I'm not like, mm, it'll do. Like, I usually go, like, if you got a booger in your nose, you don't just leave it, you, you fix it, you fix it, right? The Word of God is intended to be a mirror where we look at it, we see how we're supposed to live our life, and we do what it says. You know, I would even go so far to say that our walk with God becomes powerless if we don't actually transfer it into our life. You can read the Word of God and hear the Word of God, but the power comes in doing the Word of God. Yeah. It's when we allow the Word of God to go into our life, change how we act, change how we think, change how we go about life, that we're actually able to see change happen in our life. Number two, are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Thanks, Leanna. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, number two, God's word acts as a mirror for us to discover who we are. God's word acts as a mirror for us to discover who we are. I like in James, it says that you become like the person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover your reflection, to discover your reflection, on his face in the beginning and you perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word but then you go out and you forget your divine origin you ever look in the mirror and like you go about your day and then you look in the mirror again you're like oh yeah what did I look like <laughs> or like or like your outfit is so good you look in the mirror and you walk by again you're like oh wow like this outfit is really good right or 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 you just you just keep looking in the mirror you know the word of God it's intended for us to look at and to see who we were created to be. God in his word, he lays out who we were created to be from the very beginning of time to who we were created to be through Jesus. Jesus is supposed to be the example and not the exception. When we see Jesus' life in the word of God, it's for us to discover who we were supposed to become like, how we're supposed to live our life. You know, I think it's amazing that God's word acts as a mirror for us to discover who we are because then 
when we actually are able to do what the Word of God says, when we get out in storms, when we get out in hard times, we don't forget who we are. Yeah. How many of you know hard stuff happens in life? Yeah. You know, Jesus, I think, is interesting. He uses kind of the same example of, of being, of, there are a difference between hearing and doing. In his Sermon on the Mount, he talks about a guy who built his house on a rock and a guy who built his house on sand. And when the winds and the waves came, the guy who built his house on the sand, his house washed away. But the guy who built his house on the rock, his house stayed. I think when you begin to build your identity on the rock of the Word of God, on the rock of who Jesus is, when you go through hard things in life, you're not going to sit around wondering who you're supposed to be like, how you're supposed to act, how am I supposed to manage my emotions, how am I supposed to feel right now. Because you've read the Word of God and you're doing the Word of God, when you enter storms, you know how to act. You know how to carry yourself. You know how to have joy in hard times. You know how to um, resolve arguments with your friends at school. You know how to treat your parents with respect even when it might be something that you don't want to do. God's word acts as a mirror for us to discover who we are. Number three, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. God's word acts as a mirror for us to see Jesus. God's word acts as a mirror for us to see Jesus. God's word was never intended for us to just look at ourselves and say, look at how good I do. Look at how good I am. Look at how great I'm doing. There will come a day when you reach the end of what you're able to do and you'll need something greater. And that's where Jesus comes in. How many of you have ever tried to overcome a problem on your own and it didn't work and you needed some help? That's what Jesus is there for. Jesus is there to help you. You know, we're not perfect. I'm not sure if you knew that. Sorry to burst your bubble if you thought that you were. Um, but we're not perfect. We're going to go through things. We're going to have challenges. We're going to have hard times. But Jesus was the one who was intended to help us walk through those hard times. Jesus was the one who was intended to help us know how to carry ourselves in hard situations. To help us when we stumble. To forgive us when we mess up. Jesus is the one who's there to help us discover who we are. You know, I think um, one of the things I pray for you guys is that you would always have an assurance that God is right there with you. You No matter what you go through, um, no matter what things you face in life, it's amazing that God will always be right there. There's never a moment in life when God's not there, when he pieces out because a situation is so hard or too difficult or too emotional. But, but as we read the word of God, this whole story points to one person, and that's Jesus. Jesus is the solution to every problem, everything you might be facing right now. Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the one who's big enough, great enough to help you overcome whatever it might be that you're facing right now. And as we read the word of God, as we study the word of God, and as we do the word of God, you begin to discover and see Jesus in your life. So, what was one? Anybody remember one? Who's taking notes? Darian? One is you look into the mirror to do something. Good. Anybody else for two? Ada? No. No? Anybody else? Darian? God's word acts like a mirror for us to discover who we are. God's word acts as a mirror to discover who we are. Number three? Jason? God, God's word acts as a mirror to see Good job. Nice. Let's pray. Dear Lord, God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that as we read your word, God, we can begin to discover what things we need to do in our life. God, ways that we can live our life to live lives of impact, um, to impact our friends, to impact our schools, to impact our families, God. Lord, thank you that we can discover who we are in you as we read your word. God, a, a God-given identity, Lord, that we won't forget. God, I thank you that we can see you, Jesus, as we read your word. And, you know, 418, I want to give you a chance here, or if you're tuning in online, um, if you have never really taken the chance to accept Jesus into your life, um, you know, it's always been a great encouragement to me to know that Jesus is always with me. Jesus has always got my back. Um, Jesus loves me and forgives me. And so I want to give you guys a chance. Um, so wherever you might be, we're going to pray it here. But if you're watching online, you can pray it too. Um, but guys, go ahead and close your eyes and say, Jesus, come into my life and change me. Thank you, Jesus, 
that you came for me, that you died for me, and that you rose again, right now, I choose to make you king of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good job, 418. Without further ado, I bring Josh back up. Josh to you. Josh to you. All right, well, um, any thoughts on, on the message? Anything you guys just kind of popped up to you? Something that you maybe took a note on? Or something that really uh, spoke to you about this? It was really good. It was, it really, was good. really good. It was, really good. It was super good. Anybody else? Maybe something you never thought about before? Anything? I just want to give you guys a chance to kind of let us know what's going on. Even if you're online, if there's something that you want to go ahead and send in, something that you got out of it, that encouraged you, spoke to you. How many of you have heard this verse before? The ones he talked about, about looking in the mirror. How many of you knew they had mirrors back in the Bible days and you knew this? What? You're like, what? They didn't just what? use their phones? They, um, <laughs> they did have mirrors. But Colton, thank you so much. That's a great yeah. word. Um, and so here's my encouragement to you all. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles because that is the mirror that you're going to see Jesus, that you're going to be able to take action, and that you are going to be able to, what was the last one? Know who you are. Know who you are. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for everybody that's here and everybody online. Lord, I ask that you would just meet them right where they are. Following Jesus isn't about a lot of hype moments. Following Jesus is about being dedicated to each moment. Um, there's, a, there's a young man who's here today, and he had a, uh, a basketball camp to go to, and he could have gone, and he said he wanted to come here because he wanted to make sure that he put God first. And um, that's the kind of thing that helps you go far with God when you make Jesus a priority. And so I want to encourage you, if you're online, if you're here, make Jesus your priority. And uh, that's how you're going to go far with God. We love you guys. If you're online, we love you. We appreciate you watching. Share.